So I, as, as I've read about this almost, it, it seems predestined that you would end up playing Larry Bird in something like this. And it, it's amazing to me how coincidental it was uh, that you already have been working on a, 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 a biographical series or a biographical project that you've been writing already inspired to do something about Larry Bird. How did, how did these things come together? Yeah. Um, growing up, I played basketball like my whole life. And as I got into high school, people were kind of telling me like, you know, you kind of look like Larry Bird. I wore 33 because of, you know, the, the lore of him as a player. I mean, I was born in 92, so I didn't really get to see him in his heyday. Um, but I knew he was this like, you know, hustler, not the fastest, not the highest jumper, but, just knew where to be on the court, had this high basketball IQ and just this lethal jumper. Um, and so when I was at USC, I was about to graduate and I was trying to figure out how to kind of mold my love for acting and writing to like write apart for myself. And I kept thinking back to people telling me I looked like Larry Bird. And I was like, all right, let's see if this guy has a story. So this is around like 2014. I read the book When March Went Mad by Seth Davis, which is killer. And I was like, okay, he definitely has a backstory. It started off as a biopic. And then the notes that I was getting like, all right, you probably want to incorporate magic a little bit. So it turned into a mini series project. Um, just continually researching, writing, pitching. Eventually got Thomas Carter attached as the director. And then just, I don't want to say it was kind of out of nowhere, but uh, June of 2021, my sister-in-law texts me out of the blue and her friend, who's an actor as well, texted her like, hey, this Larry Bird role popped up for this Adam McKay produced HBO series. Sean should audition for it. And then I kind of went into like scramble mode of talking to my manager who was helping me with my writing project in order to find me someone who could get me a self-tape audition and that was kind of how it all came to be. I'm so ha happy to hear you mention Seth Davis. Uh, he and I actually uh, went to college together and worked together on the uh, the student television station there covering sports. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's fun. And and I am old enough to not only have seen Larry Bird play, but to have covered him when he was coaching the Pacers and to have sat in his office mm -hmm. and talked to him. And what's amazing, he is without pretense – so often when I watch portrayals of these real people, like I imagine that to play Magic Johnson, there's so many layers of Magic Johnson and when to deploy that smile and how and the motivations of him in any given moment and the complexity of Jerry West character. Larry Bird is not a complicated guy. You ask a question, yeah. you get an answer. And in some ways, isn't that more challenging as an actor to get to an essence there without artifice? Yeah, I mean, it's challenging because, like you said, he is a very simple guy, but there is so much backstory and context to why he got to that point. But it's like not wanting to showcase that overtly, you know, mm -hmm. like his upbringing in French Lick, the way his mom raised him and his dad raised him, the way he was impacted by his father's suicide. Um how him going to Indiana and then dropping out impacted him and kind of having that as a context for myself. And then it's like that, that when you work as an actor, you do all this work. And then when you get on set, you throw it out and you just have to trust that what you did um, in lead up will prepare you for the scene and that day on set. And that's kind of how it is with Larry just in general. It's like, he has like this rich, complicated backstory, but then he comes off as this, you know, terse guy who is just no nonsense and all he wants to do is win NBA championships. Well, he's a he's a killer. The, the dude is a leg yeah. legit competitive yeah. killer. And oh, yeah. A and that was the thing to play because it was like I thought I was competitive, and then you just have to amplify that up by like a million in order to get into bird zone. Because he, you know, the reason why the goats are the goats, like Magic, Larry, Kobe, 
MJ, like they just are on a, they're like stratosphere lengths different than anybody um, that's playing the game. And what I find interesting in the context of this show is so much of a, a connective theme in the show is about appetites. The, the, mm-hmm. uh, it's about it, not just Jerry Buss and his lifestyle, but obviously magic and his his many appetites and Jerry West himself. And, and we'll get into how, how you know the the anger that some people have in here, which I think is completely misplaced and and, and evinces a total lack of understanding of the artistic process. But that's neither here nor there. The Jerry West yeah. is in obviously tormented, but he's also yeah. a killer. He also like though, mm-hmm. that that where, where Bird it, it almost you can he and Jerry West have this 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 very unique similarity, but Bird almost mm-hmm. dispenses or pushes the tor- whatever torment he has, he's able to compartmentalize it, and you don't really see it where where West can't like he he can't filter yeah. it in the same way. Yeah, uh, Bird, you know, is able to enjoy the victories unlike Jerry West was able to at least shown in the show, you know? Um, and the, the hard part about season one is you don't really get to see him in those victorious moments. So you see him as this angry, surly guy, but it's really because of that just want to win. Like, like you said, it's very, I, I don't, I wouldn't call it one track minded, but it's very much like, he basketball is his life. There's nothing else. So you're talking about appetites of, you know, Jerry Buss and magic has multiple appetites and stuff like that. Bird's appetite is just to play basketball, be the best basketball player ever and win championships. Um, so that's kind of why he comes off just so cold, maybe sometimes and standoffish, but it's like, that's his one goal in life. You've got the shot down too, and it it is yeah. it's not the way someone would teach it now. It's not a way a coach is going to say, "Hey, you know, have that elbow up the, that way." Yeah. But and, and Larry already nobody was going to say a word to him because it, there was no yeah. need to at that point. But did you did you have to unlearn and relearn something to make sure that you get the angle of that of that signature elbow position? Yeah, um, I trained with our basketball trainer, Edon Ravine, um, and he's trained a bunch of NBA All-Stars, so it was incredible to be working with him. And his goal was to make me a silhouette of Bird on the court, whether it was his shot, how he dribbled, how he moved. Um, And that was, like, the main focus for him and I was, like, you know, we don't want anyone to look at that shot and be like, and uh, there's something just off with it. It's not quite bird like. And we like really pounded in second naturally, like getting that shot, getting the elbow out. We called it the chicken wing. It's like the mm-hmm. chicken wing needs to be super high up. And um, even the positioning of his feet, like he, he doesn't really ever square up to the basket. He's turned a little bit to his left. Um, just small details like that, that we just like, constantly were doing in practices um and the way that he got that down second nature for me was we would practice it in the beginning when i was warming up and then we would do conditioning and then at the end of conditioning when i'm just completely out of breath and not thinking about anything if i was able to do the bird shot we were like all right we're ready for set um if you're able to do that without even thinking at this point. That's good coaching. That's why I have all, all the coaches I've been around always practice free throws when you are tired. That is exactly. that, that, that is very good coaching. Now, when you're being directed in some of these just whacked out scenes, whether it's a hallucination or it's you being a voice in his head, we heard some of that stuff. Are you directed differently to be more hyperbolic or are you playing the character straight and say, you, you use it as you want to use it, whether I'm real or whether I'm a figment of magic's imagination at this point and just sort of bedeviling magic. Are you playing it the same way or do you have to dial something up or down depending on how it's going to be used? Um, for that specific scene where I'm in magic's head, the, the way that I played it differently was I was, going into that day thinking about, all right, if this is what magic is envisioning, 
then this is a Larry Bird that Magic is thinking about. It's not Larry in the whole sense of just like this is his character. So I got to be a little more hyperbolic with, you know, the smiling and screwing with him a little more um, because it was this vision. I was thinking of this vision of, all right, if this, if this is what is under magic skin, then I need to play that up a little bit compared to, you know, just the cold, hard killer of, you know, the press conference scene or something like that. Um, So I wasn't like directed that way. That's kind of the way that I played it. And then, if they wanted me to play it differently, then they would tell me. But um, it seemed to fit perfectly with that that scene and all the different scenes kind of added up together. We are talking with Sean Patrick Small, who plays Larry Bird in Winning Time, which has thankfully been renewed for season two. Everybody's got a different process and some uh, will stay in character depending on how long the shoot is going to go. And, 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 but not everybody does. So I'm wondering, in between takes or in and around craft services, who, was, who, did, who on this cast, this star-studded cast, have you most enjoyed hanging out with? Who's been the most fun? Um, I mean, I hung out with Quincy most of the time just because, he was the person that I had the most scenes with and were like really good friends, which made it easier to dial up that tension when we were on set and in scenes. Um, But like everyone in the cast was incredible. I mean, I I live across the street from Austin Aaron who plays Mark Landsberger and he's one of the nicest guys ever. Um, I learned that, Solomon Hughes' daughter is going to the junior high school that I went to up in the Bay Area. He's great to hang out with. Um, like Delonte, I, I could go on and on on like the whole Lakers squad and um, all of my Celtics players as well. We got Ant Henderson that I hang out with and Mike Bornazian and all that stuff. Um, but it, it was just one of those sets where there was this energy that everyone was super passionate about this project. Like the vets in the field, like we, we worked with like Jason Siegel and Adrian Brody during that Celtics and Lakers game shoot. Um, They had this like energy of bringing up us newcomers and the newcomers were like, this is incredible. And this, that even drove the energy higher. So it was just one of those environments where everyone was happy to be there, no matter how, hard and tough the work would be um so it made it way easier to be like this collective group of family and friends pretty much so i read this new yorker piece over the weekend where they actually went through the legal climb that if jerry west were actually Uh going to sue and if he's really all that angry just how improbable if not impossible it would be for him to be victorious doesn't mean he can't and doesn't mean he wouldn't put the resources into doing it is there any concern among you on the show like oh wait a second we could be in some hot water here or are hbo and the producers and they're more importantly the lawyers telling you no worries keep doing what you're doing um i haven't heard anything in particular but i just know that there has been so much extensive research done by the producers the writers max the showrunner uh hbo i'm i'm just assuming all of that um i know max talks about like how he read like 60 books in preparation for this, including Jerry West's uh, memoir, which he, he says is like one of the greatest books out, which I need to read. Um, But it's just one of those things where, you know, you can understand why some people don't like the way that they're portrayed on a show that's dramatized, but um, they've done their research and this is just a dramatization of these characters and we're having fun making it. So, Is there anything that you can tell us about what we may expect for Larry Bird, your character, next season? Um, nothing that I even know about. Um, I think they're finishing up writing the scripts right now. So, I mean, I know season two, to basketball wise is a lot better for the Celtics in terms of them winning the championship. Spoiler um, alert. Come on now. 
Spoiler alert. Yeah, don't don't look back in time at what already happened. Uh, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where I'm just looking forward to diving even deeper into that character and into that rivalry with magic. So you'll you'll probably see when I when I see. So and I have to tell you, some of my favorite stuff has been the Sports Illustrated covers that have been redone. Mm-hmm. I have originals of those like I like in, do. in yeah like in my childhood bedroom and in, in my parents house in the bag they're there in like paper bags but some of those I actually went and looked and they're there and I don't know what they're worth I probably were you know a couple dollars whatever it is but it was so cool to see the detail like even the, the cheerleaders the, the way they cast the the cheerleaders with the hairdos and everything that they it's so careful and i just i hope people understand that that's appreciated that trying to get that stuff looking just right for those of us to whom it matters i i I applaud it yeah i mean the first day i was on set um it like put me at ease because i was pretty much just transported back to 1980 i like walked out and was like oh this is uh this is not like a set I've ever been on. Like this is, I've never done like a period piece before and seeing, you know, the cars, the way everyone was dressed, the way hair and makeup was completely different, obviously back then. And, um, I really applaud the, the crew for doing all that. Like hair and makeup worked tirelessly on everything from the background and all that. And then the production designers and it's, it was incredible. I mean, they must have three people doing Jerry Buss's chest wig alone. I mean, just the <laughs> what that takes. Uh, last thing for you. You mentioned that you went to junior high school in the Bay Area. I am told that that would make you a Golden State Warriors fan. And they're, they're going to start tonight. I love this matchup against these Celtics, too. And uh, I, what, what, what do you think? What are you hoping for? Yeah, I was kind of going through, it's funny, on my drive home yesterday, I was going through the matchups in my head of starters on the Warriors, you know, matched up with the Celtics starters, and I'm I'm just excited for this series. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this goes seven, and it's just like end-to-end, just thrilling basketball. Um, people have been asking me, like, who are you rooting for? I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm I'm a Celtics fan now that I play Larry Bird, but like, you know, I got to stick with the hometown team. The Warriors have been like through and through my team, and I love the way they play. And it'll it'll be a really fun series. It might be more defensive minded than people are thinking of, so the scores might be lower than we're expecting. This is really fun. I I, I appreciate you doing this, and I can't wait for that next season because it just it's uh, I really look forward to each and every episode, and it's it's so well done. Uh, here's to another tremendous season. Here's to a bunch of awards too. Here's to a bunch of Emmy nominations for everybody. Oh man, thank you so much for having me on the show. This has been a blast.